When you're leaving the room today, if you could please show those, have those ready to show to the security guards so that they can check them as they're going out. We just want to make sure that everyone's going home with the same stuff that they brought in. At this time, it looks like most people have found their way to their seat. So if I have anyone with an empty seat across All right, them, we're underway the in the second round Michael of day Gold's two of Grand Prix Salt Lake City. We have here. Marcel, Angelo so Zafra. There, there you get a look at him on the left, Canadian in. player, man of the crowd team, not least. playing against Brian Olvera. Please, and no, there we get a look at Brian no Olvera uh, in the Plus EV so game shirt. It's a shop one by Thomas Pinnell. Okay. So Marcel gets things started off with a turn one ponder. And an uh, interesting thing off that ponder, okay, he drew Thought Scour, so he's the potential to mill away a card he doesn't want. But he'll just cast a turn two like Invisible Stalker to, to match judge. the champion of the parish of Brian Olvera. Brian Olvera will take the opportunity and turn two to cast Honor of the Pure, pump his Champion of the Parish to a 2-2, and get in for two, dropping Marcel down to 18. Good morning, everybody. Marcel now has the option to cast a couple of equipment, but he'll just get in with the Invisible Stalker and drop Brian down to 19 post-combat, play Rune Changer's Pike, planning on equipping that next turn. So Brian will go... Consider his options. He really wants another human or two to pump up that champion that of the parish. This event is run at competitive REL. But he's still so considering his options. Seeker on Coast. Or think something has gone Mirror wrong, Crusader. It is your job to call a judge. Champion will get a plus one plus one counter. Attack in for three, dropping Marcel to 15. <laughs> that so Mirror Crusader is going to hit. Very I want to ask yeah, you specifically to end of turn Marcel's going to Thought Scour, milling a Delver and a Seacrum Coast, and straight here. Not another instant or sorcery for that Rune Changer Spike, but before he attacks, he's going to ponder, add another instant to his graveyard. I'd like you all to take this time to look at your necklace. So unfold that necklace and look at it. Holding a batter skull Please in his hand. Please make sure your name is on the top of the Considering which of those cards he wants, he's going to keep it. Once you make draw sure your name is on there, Vapor Snag off the top, equip. And Invisible Stalker. It's going to be interesting because you want to use the Vapor Stag now to give Invisible Stalker plus number. an extra power. Right, yeah, but you kind of want to wait until combat to hit your the cable mirror number Crusader because you necklace. don't want to take an extra damage from the this. Champion of the Parish. This will make things right. go a lot smoother for us and therefore for I mean, also there's a chance that he taps out pre combat to put an extra counter on Champion of the Parish. The right and then he'll be unable to cast the Mirror Crusader later on in the game. Once you've done I mean, later, later on in that turn, so... Make sure it He's is considering that, which one he Make wants sure to do. And looks like he's just going to get in with that Invisible Stalker exactly for three. Cards in your that those or the for cards four, rather. Finally, Antonino DeRosa just won Grand Prix turn. He just won it? Yeah. Wow. That's his, what, fourth Grand Prix win? Third? He's won a hand. We'll have to look it up. And there we go, Hero of Bladehold for Brian Olvera. Now Brian will get in with his creatures, and Vapor Snag likely to take out the Mirror Crusader that would deal six damage if, if he doesn't do anything. I mean, Marcel's kind of in a tough spot here. Steven Espinoza is in the room. Please raise your hand. Steven Espinoza. Let's see what he ends up doing. Looks like he's going to cast Vapor Snag on Mirror Crusader. Dropping Brian to 14, but Marcel himself is going to take four and go to 11. Now you've got to deal with that, that hero of Bladehold, which is just going to kill him. Yeah. I mean, Invisible Stalker only has five power right now. All righty, players, at this time, judges are going to come around to collect so your deck lists. Please have those he's going to get Once in and then probably play Batter Skull post combat. plays Banner Skull, he can block the champion, he can gain a little life to mitigate the damage from everything else that's coming in, and then he gets to... He's likely going to block the, the hero, right? Oh, maybe not. I guess it doesn't kill it. Yeah. Block the champion. He doesn't get to kill that either, really. So that's going to be attacking as a 5-5 if he plays Mirror Crusader first. Uh, that's true. At least... But actually, uh, I think he wins if it plays out that way. Marcel gains, wins? Yeah, Marcel wins. He gains four life off of the 
the Banished Skull, the token dies, whatever, he re-equips to Invisible Stalker, and that's nine. Yeah. And there's no life gain for Brian O'Rara here. Brian needs two humans here to win, I think. I'm not positive. I think it's ten damage he's representing. But again, he still gets to just absorb some of it and gain four yeah. from Banished Skull. That's true. There you see Brian O'Vera considering his moves with uh, Grand Prix Mexico City champion Paul Rietzel bouncing up behind him. Yeah, this is going to be the be to decide who's the last complete undefeated player. The winner at the end of this round will be the one 11 and 0 player. All right, plays a second honor of the pure. Plays a third, third honor of the pure. Oh wow, man, the math just got interesting. So that champion of the parish is currently just normally a three three. Now it's plus, a six six. So now it's a six six, right? And so that's a six seven. Pure blade hold. And it's going to make. It's going to put two four four tokens into play. And then, then battle get, cry. Then get yeah. battle cry. So they'll be attacking for five. So that's attacking. So ten. Plus six is sixteen. I think that. Marcel. I think Marcel just can leaves. only go to fifteen. Yeah. If my math is So he blocks one of the sixes, right? That's his best bet. Right. And then, that's ten. That's sixteen. Yeah. I don't. I don't think he can. Uh, One's a seven. The champion's going to be a seven because of battle cry. Sure. Oh, sure, right. So he blocks the champion, and that's, that's And then she still takes 16. He goes to 15, and it's not enough. Marcel's doing the math himself. I think he sees it. And if he could somehow live this turn, he would win on the crackback. Right. But he has exact damage to win on the crackback. I don't see how he could do it. What is Brian doing here? going on with Brian over here? What's he... I think he's explaining... Oh, how he's much just talking about... Did, did, did Marcel ask him to... How did, you, how did you stack your triggers? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would make a big deal. <laughs> like, let me think about that. <laughs> so block the champion. Take, take 16. Just, just take 16, right? So All six. All right. Standard open players. Plus four, Pairings plus four. Pairings are up for round one. Plus round two. one pairings are up. Please find your seats once again. Standard open players, round one pairings are up. Last Please time I checked, that's 16 team. total. Still 16. Game four, go to 15. I mean, unless he misstacked his triggers. I, I, I think I'm doing the math right. So, Hero Blade Hold is six power, right? Correct. Each of those tokens is normally four power. Correct. So that's six plus four plus four plus one more for each of them from Battle Cry. Right, that's, so that's 16. 16. And Marcel's at 11, so he'll gain four from Unless life point. Unless his life total's incorrect. Yeah. He gains four from life point. Yeah. yeah, and oh, okay. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Count up the damage, double check, triple check. Quadruple check, and there we go. Marsh, or, uh, Brian Overo wins the first game okay. here. Okay, okay, 16, and then uh, again, you stack your triggers how? <laughs> <laughs> wins the first game here, round 11 of Grand Prix Salt Lake City. Sporting, you know, a deck Craig Wesco would be proud of. So, players go to the sideboard. What do you see from Brian's deck you think he's going to bring in? You know, I mean, is he going to revoke existence? Certainly seems like the, the layup here. Sure. Uh, sort of Wheel and Peace, no. Sort of Feast of Famine, no. Yeah. He'd want yeah. Sort of Fire Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I actually heard a lot of people talking about uh, getting one Sort of Body this on the other side. This Star City Games Open uh, Because it's actually just very good against the Double Table 115 going to the Star City Games Open Series tent in the corner. So, Craig maybe Wesco maybe versus Zachary, Zachary Lucero once again. And from uh, Marcel's tent. deck. Feature tent. Uh, let's take a look at here. He's likely going to bring in Dungeon Geist. Probably a couple timely reinforcement. Definitely a sort of warm piece. Uh, but that looks like that looks like it. Maybe his revoke existence. Yeah. Yeah. Almost certainly. Get get rid of some of those honor of the peers that finished him off this game. There's actually still another undefeated player out there. I see Tom Martell still battling. <laughs> he's 8 0 and 2. He's still grinding it out. I see him. I see him battling. I don't know who his opponent is, but. 
happily fighting with two draws. But wow, Antonino De Rosa won Grand Prix turn? Yep. Jeez. Patrick Chapin, eight and two. Brian Kibler, seven and three. I'm just going through Twitter like you guys can at home too. But uh, Conley Woods took another loss and it puts him at seven and three. So, players sideboarding up for game two. I think Bronson Magnin still has one loss. Grand Prix Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska champion. And... So just give you a little more about Marcel. He's uh, considered one of the best Canadian players, according to, to KYT. Fourth at last year's Nationals, and uh, you know, just someone that they're, they're expecting to finish on. I mean, he sort of coasted, or uh, you know, cleared his way through ten rounds yeah. without a single loss. But he might have, he may have met his match with Brian Olvera here in round eleven. I kind of, I just kind of like this deck in the, the matchup, West Coast, actually. The, the West Coast deck? Yeah, I mean, it just, it does a lot of the same things, but it just attacks, you know, it just comes at, comes at the deck with so many more creatures, is able to enhance all of them, as opposed to, you know, enhancing one of them. <coughs> you know, it, it's, uh, You don't get to play all the sweet blue cards, though. You don't, well, no, and that, and that's definitely it. Although, he does have the access to blue, uh, he's running Moreland Haunts. For, for a little bit of reach. Right. Uh, he's got seven blue sources and does bring in Vincer the Sojin. Yeah, I've, I'd be interested to see what I'd he brings. I'd love to up. see that. I'd love to see what that's there for. Man, Morland Hunt is so good. That card is so good. Yeah. Wh which of the, that land cycle do you think is the most powerful? Uh, I think it is, it's got to be pretty clearly Kessig Wolf Run. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. But yeah. we haven't seen too much Kessig Wolf run. No, but I mean, it, it on, created but... whole decks. I mean, Moreland Haunt is just. Is, is Moreland Haunt and the Folly of Drown Yard are both powerful. Gavany yeah, Township. Gav Gavany Townships is uh, pretty amazing, actually. Which is the best one in draft? Probably still Wolf run. Walt of the Archangel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were including that, that set. Uh, Gavany Township, though, is, is probably. You know, just because it, it, you know, reward you, you know, by making you be green-white. <laughs> <laughs> so play started here in game two. Brian starts with a turn one champion of the parish. No turn one play from Marcel. Let's see if he's got a play on turn two. Doesn't look like it. And Brian will follow things up with a Doom Traveler. That will quickly get mana leaked. Does Brian have a, a third one drop? Yes, he does. Another Doom Traveler. Pumping up that champion of the parish to a 2-2. Two -two. And getting in, dropping Marcel down to 18 life. All right, standard open players. I'd like to welcome you all to round number one. So, you have 50 minutes. Please begin. Looks like players are figuring out where to place their cards so you guys at home can see them the most clearly. And Marcel goes ahead to his turn. Where are his creatures? Looks like he's just sitting on spells in his hand and just passes it back. Now Brian Olvera's on his three drops. He can cast cards like Mirren Crusader. Three Doom Travelers. <laughs> yeah, he's already cast two, so if he casts three Doom Travelers. There's an Honor of the Pure. Is that one going to resolve? I don't see a mana leak in Marcel's hand, so. Stick, yes, no. Attack you for five. Put you at 13. He doesn't want a Vapor Snag there. Vapor Snag at the end of turn. turn yeah. By a whole turn. And Revoke Existence is drawn, just drawn off the top for Marcel. But he chooses to hold back. Wait for Snapcaster Mana Leak. Snap Mana Leak? Snap Leak? Snap Leak. Another Honor the Pure for Brian. Let's see if Marcel <laughs> wants to Snap Leak that. Looks like no, and uh, Doom Traveler is going to get in for three, dropping Marcel to ten. 
Delver drawn from our cell. It's going to cast Delver, likely cast Provoke Existence on one of those Honor of the Peers, right? After so magic. To that point. I mean, I don't know why he didn't mana leak last turn with Snapcaster. Is he afraid of something like Hero of Bladehold? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I guess he's, he's respecting the, the, just, uh, the game breakers. Sure. Champion of the Parish coming back down. And then a, a third a third Doom Traveler. That one is going to get mana. That, that one's worthy of a mana link, but on the pier, not so much. But, oh, wow, Brian has a mana leak of his own to counter Snapcaster Mage. Oh, he does have, yeah, he does have mana leaks. I'm sorry. So Delver of Secrets is going to transform into Insectile Aberration, revealing a Vapor Snag off the top from Marcel. Revoke Existence is going to take out one of the Honor of the Peers. And you have to imagine if you're Marcel here, you got to hold back, play a little defensively. I mean, sitting on only seven life. He's in a little bit of trouble, but no, <laughs> and say just, no, okay. he's like I'm attacking. Always be clocking, A B C. Your cosmic image is copying. Likely the Delver, right? And he's copying champion of the parish. Champion? Why not? Why not copy the insectile aberration? Yeah. Insectile yeah, aberration. Okay. Interested in copying Doom Traveler on some level. Yeah, spirit token. Mm, get, mm. But three mana, that's going to be Oblivion Ring for Brian. That's going to take out the Phantasmal Image. Which one do you want? Yeah. yeah. Just clear the path, you're at seven. Now you're dead. But there's a Vapor Snag that Marcel showed off of Delver of Secrets last turn. So he's got to figure out which one of the Snag, creatures you're at one. he wants to use. Oh, no. It's there's only one, so he's actually at two. Uh, no, or three, three. three. Yeah. So Champion Parish comes back down. Brian's, you know, sort of needs to figure out how to get out of this. He needs something good this turn. Looks like he drew a mana leak. I don't know if that's going to do it. And that's yep. that's game. Brian Olvera wins the match two games to zero and becomes the only 11-0 player here at Grand Prix Salt Lake City. Congratulations to Brian.